What's up, Mavletic lovers and listeners, and welcome back to another episode of Maverick Postgame. We've got another full show for you today as Mesa men's basketball have an incredible victory that led them to the RMAC quarterfinals. And the women's basketball team closed out regular season with a win. Plus, softball makes a huge comeback win after a loss. And men's lacrosse has a demolishing victory. All of that and so much more as we move ahead into this recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. So with that being said, I'm your host, Grace Metcalf. And I'm Maddie Ganender. Let's get into all the game-breaking stats, off-the-wall wins, heartbreaking losses, and in-depth analysis of our CMU Athletics. Roll it! Hello everyone, once again, I am Maddie Ganender. And I am Grace Metcalf. Let's hop right in and take a look at all the Mavtastic action that took place this week here at CMU. The Colorado Mesa men's basketball had a demolishing 83-67 win over Western, which secured them a spot in the quarterfinals in the RMAC tournament. Western Colorado came out ready to play and was stride for stride with the Mavs for much of the first half, which featured five ties and four lead changes and saw the home team hold a lead as late as four minutes and nine seconds remaining in the first period. When Blaze Threat completed a three-point play just before the first half buzzer, that gave the Mavs a 38-33 lead, which was their largest of the half. The Mavericks' second half offense seemed to be shot out a cannon from the halftime locker room. Every Colorado Mesa possession ended with a basket or free throws for the first six and a half minutes of the second half. Trevor Baskin threat and, and Rineker hit layups on CMU's first four possessions after halftime, with Rineker grabbing an offensive rebound to finish the putback and prompt WCU to call a timeout. Baskin got six points in 25 seconds out of the timeout, and after Threat went one for two at the line and hit a layup, Christopher Speller found Michael McCurry for a three-pointer. Suddenly, the Mavs were up 58-40, to 40, and it would be a double-digit lead the rest of the way. As a team, the Mavericks owned the inside over the rival Mountaineers, outscoring WCU in the paint 56-26. to 26. CMU shot 60% from the field for the game, the second-highest team total of the season. Unlike Wednesday's game against Westminster, when the Mavs took nearly half their field goal attempts from the three-point line, CMU went inside the arc on 79% of its attempts against the Mountaineers. The Colorado Mesa women's basketball team needed a win to guarantee themselves a spot in the RMAC tournament, and they, just, they got just that. The Mavericks defeated their rivals, the Western Colorado Mountaineers, 59-48 to clinch a spot in the tournament, coming back from a loss the night before. In this game, the Mavericks led were wire to wire and never trailed. They led by as many as 19 points with eight seconds left in the third quarter at 48 to 29 after a made three by Kylie Kravik. Their defense was much more in sync as they limited the Mountaineers to just 30.4% from the field. Only four total players from Western Colorado scored points. Laura Gutierrez led the Mavericks in scoring with 15 points coming off the bench. She was 3-for-6 from field, including 2-for-4 from 3 and a perfect 7-for-7 seven seven from the line. Olivia Reed continues to be a beast down the stretch as she had 11 points, 14 rebounds, 5 assists, and 4 blocks in the win. Monica Brooks added 11 points and 9 rebounds. As a team, the Mavericks led in all statistics, having greater field goal success than the Mountaineers, having most of their success from inside the paint with 75% to their 70%. The Lady Mavs had more rebounds with 42 to their 33 and turnovers with 12 to 8. The Colorado Mesa softball team bounced back from a tight 6 to 5 loss in the first game to win the second 10 to 2 via the mercy rule as they split Sunday's doubleheader while winning the weekend series against visiting Black Hills State University. Mavericks won three of the four games of the series, all via the Mercy Rule, and outscored the Yellow Jackets 47-10 while moving to 8-8 eight eight overall and 6-2 in Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference play. In Game 2, the Mavs scored 10 unanswered runs as Pruitt hit her fifth 
home run of the season to slice the deficit in half in the bottom of the second. The Mavs then put up five runs on six hits in the third as Crouch delivered the biggest blow, a three run homer down the right field line that broke what was a two to two tie. Meanwhile, Arietta and Ileana Mendoza had RBI singles on both sides of Crouch's eighth homer of the season. Leading 6-2 at the time, the Mavs then plated three more runs in the seventh as Ava Fugate and Brandi Holler both hit RBI infield singles. The Mavs then added the game-clinching run in the bottom of the fifth as Aislin Sharp was hit by a bouncing pitch and moving to third on a Jorison single and deep crouch flyout. Sharp then scored on a walk-off wild pitch. As a team, the Mavericks finished the second game with 12 hits as eight of the nine starters managed two hits while the other, Bradford, drew two walks. The Mavs did, however, have two errors to the Jackets' zero and two home runs to their one. The Colorado Mesa men's lacrosse team destroyed Lees McRae with a 25-2 win last week. The Mavs did not let Lees McRae hang around for long, scoring 11 times in the first quarter, 19 times in the first half, and 10 times before Lees McRae found the net. Drew Eichelman kicked things off with a goal off an assist from Hunter Holcomb just a minute and 8 seconds into the game before Alex Blatt and A.J. Switzer added on. Jet Brummett picked up a true hat trick, scoring three consecutive goals to make it 6-0 with less than 10 minutes gone. Brummett would add a fourth later in the period, along with another from Blatt, two from Points, and one from Mike Edwards. The Mavericks were content to run down the clock for much of the second half. Freshman Dylan Pless had a couple career moments, scoring his first collegiate goal while a man up with a 10 minute and 44 seconds to play in the fourth quarter. As a team, the Mavericks dominated in shots, 52 to 13, ground balls, 40 to 13, and faceoffs, 24 to 8. With Dylan Checkets winning 16 of 19 from the circle on his own. With the win, the Mavs are 2 to 0 on the season. Now that we have recapped some of the games, it's time to announce our Maverick of the Week. Our Maverick of the Week goes to Ricky Mestas. We wanted to honor Ricky for her impact here at CMU. She was a talented and hardworking distance runner who set a career best 5K time of 19 minutes and 2.8 seconds and was often the Mavs third finisher on the cross country team. She was a wonderful student and a beloved friend who will be missed dearly. Thank you for your contribution to CMU and congratulations Ricky for your outstanding performance. You are a Maverick of the Week. We are now at the end of our show and it is time for our closing statements. My closing thought is on how the basketball teams will perform in the RMAC tournament. They are so close and with the rate the men's team especially has been performing, I don't see how they can't win the RMAC title. I definitely think there's a pretty good chance of at least one of the teams bringing home an RMAC title. My closing thoughts are on the men's swim and dive team. Eight national championship qualifying swimmers and divers were named to the college sports Communica communications academic all district team. I thought that it is really cool how a lot of your athletes are also performing well in academics. That is cool. Now that we have wrapped up all the action from this week and given our closing thoughts, it is time to close the show. Thank you everyone so much for joining us this week on Maverick Post Game. I've been your host, Grace Metcalf. And I've been Maddie Ganender. Be sure to go check out our channel 62.2 for more games and updates. We'll catch you next week on an all-new recap-packed episode of Maverick Postgame. Stay safe, Mavs. Study hard. Go to a game or two. And of course, have yourselves a Mace Amazing Day.